What's up everyone, I'm Nick. This is the first video in the course that we're gonna actually do some coding, so I'm super excited to share it with you guys. In this video, we're gonna look at adding text to the screen. Now, if you've used SwiftUI before, if you have dabbled, you probably know how easy it is to add text to the screen, but you might not know some of the cool things that we can do to the text component. So we're gonna look at how we can change the text from just plain text to adding different fonts, different colors, we can make it different sizes, we can change the character spacing, the line spacing, a whole bunch of really cool things, mostly formatting, but important stuff to know. I apologize in advance if this sounds super, super basic, but we have to cover the basics before we can get into the cool stuff. So this should be a quick and easy starting point for the course. Without further ado, let's open up Xcode and get into it. All right, so I am back in our Xcode project that we made in the last video, and I'm gonna create a new file for all the code that we're gonna do in this video. So let's do that by right-clicking in the Project Navigator over on the left side here, and I'm gonna create a new file. This is going to be a Swift UI view, and I'm gonna call it Text Bootcamp. So when we create a new file, it comes already preloaded with a text inside. Uh, and we can see this text in our canvas. On the right side here, let's hit the resume button to get the canvas all connected. And we can see that the text says hello world, and on the right side, our preview says the same. Now again, I showed you in the last video, we could have typed this in, text with the parentheses, or we could have used the library in the top right corner by hitting that plus sign and finding a text and then double clicking that to add it to our screen. But of course, we already have this text in here. Uh, so now we can start modifying it. And that's what this video is all about. It's how to make this very basic text look really cool for all of our applications. And the most obvious, most common thing that we wanna do to text is change the font because right now it's just this very basic default font. So if I click onto this text and I open up the inspector on the right side here, we can then see some of the modifiers that we can add to this text. Now, of course, we can type these in directly, but if you're a beginner, this is a great place to get started. And you can see here that we can change the font. And Xcode comes by default with a bunch of font sizes uh, for us already. So instead of putting font size 12 or 32, we can just use font title and it will be a size that a title would actually be. And this is really handy when we start coding. And you can see that when we click that title, the modifier actually added itself to our code. Now, as we start coding, I'm going to start adding more and more modifiers to this file. And in SwiftUI, basically you can add modifiers to any component. So this is the component, this is the modifier, by using dot notation. So right after this parentheses at the end of the component, you can press the dot, and then you have all the modifier options that you can have for this component. Now putting it right after the parentheses or putting it on the next line like it is here does the same thing. As long as there is no other code between this component and this modifier, uh, it will work the same. And the reason we put it on a second line instead of putting it here is because if you had a whole bunch of modifiers, it might get hard to read. But if you had a whole bunch and you had them nicely indented like this, it makes it a little easier. So that's what I'm going to do as we get going. But right now, let's just take a look at this font. We can change these fonts. You can see right now it's pretty large. We could also do a smaller font like caption and it's nice and small. So we can easily change our font sizes by just calling dot font and then caption. I'm gonna change this back to body, which is the default. And then let's add another modifier. So I'm gonna press enter, tab over, and the next one we're gonna look at is font weight. So I type in font weight and we get this nice completion here. I'll hit enter on that. And then when we use the dot inside here, we get all of the weights. Now a font weight is just the thickness of each letter. So if we did heavy, which is really thick, we can see that the letters will update to be pretty thick. 
And of course, you can change this to whatever you want in order from ultralight being thinnest all the way to black, which is the thickest. So ultralight, our text is nice and thin. I find myself using dot medium and uh, dot semi bold a lot. I think they look very nice in applications. Now I'm gonna comment this font weight out. I don't wanna delete it just so we know that it's still here. So in Swift, I can use two backslashes like this to comment it out and it will turn gray. And that basically means that it will not compile in our code. So I can still have this code written here, but it's not actually gonna be included in here. So you can see that the font weight of semi bold is not actually included on the preview. So moving on, I'm gonna start using some other modifiers. Instead of font weight, we could also just call dot bold directly and that will bold whatever our current text is. We can also call dot underline. And that will add an underline to the text. And of course, dot italic, which makes it nice and italic. And one more we can do is dot strike through, which is not very common in apps, but you can add that line through your text. Now, while we're here, I just wanna mention that the underline and the strike through can be customized. So I'm gonna comment this underline out and I'm gonna call it dot underline again, but this time I'm gonna use the second completion here that has a color option. And when I click enter on that, it then lets us say, do we want the underline true? And what color do we want the underline to be? Right now it's black by default, but I can change it to color.red. And now we have a red underline. We can do the same thing for the strike through. So I can type in strike through. And instead of using the first one, we'll use the second one with a color option. So do we want it true? And then we can do color.green. So these are some really cool ways to modify your text pretty easily. And if you're a beginner developer, I would highly recommend using just the dot font and the dot font weight. And that pretty much will encompass all of the uh, font sizing and thickness that you're really gonna need in a basic app. Um, but I do wanna show you guys some more complex ways that you can do it if you wanna get a little more detail oriented. So I'm gonna comment all of this out by using the ba double backslash. I'll do it down here as well. And one other trick you can do in Swift UI is if you hold the shift button and select several rows, you can then press command and backslash and that will automatically add the backslashes to all of those lines that you're highlighted. We can also then uncomment them out by highlighting them, the rows again and then pressing command backslash uh, and it will bring it back into our code. But for now, let's leave it commented out and let's look at another way to change the font. We can call dot font. And this time, instead of using these dot title call out caption, we're gonna call dot system. And we have several completions on what kind of system font we wanna use. And let's click the one with the size, weight, and design option. Let's hit enter. And firstly, it's asking us for size. Now this is the same as if you were in Microsoft Word. Uh, and you wanted to change your font size. So we can do font size 24. Uh, and then it's going to ask us for weight. This is the same as the font weight that we did earlier. So let's do dot semi bold. And lastly, it's gonna ask us for design. Now in the design, we have four options that come default into Swift UI. And these are basically just different fonts themselves. So the default is what we were using, but we could also change to monospace, which will look a little different. We can do dot rounded and dot serif. Now there is a way to add custom fonts to your project, but that's a little more advanced and I'm gonna get into that in another video. So for right now, we can just change our font and do explicit sizing uh, if we want. But for right now, I just wanted to show you guys this method so that we can get an exact size if we want. So this is great if you had a design team that was using specific font sizes and they want you to replicate that in your app. You can just do that here. The downside of using this method is that this number will not automatically resize. So on an iPhone, users can change their font size to 
like bigger if you've probably seen like your grandparents or your parents need the bigger font on their phone well if this was in your code this font would stay 24 but if you had used the font with one of these preset like the body or the title these fonts will automatically update size based on the system uh, settings so i definitely recommend using these ways directly but of course sometimes you're going to want to use specific font sizes for certain things so that's that modifier and now let's move on to some formatting things so i'm going to comment this out as well the next modifier i want to look at is the dot multi line text alignment and this by default if we didn't include it would be dot center and this is basically if you have multiple lines in your text how you want them to align now to view this we need multiple lines of text obviously it's called multi-line so let's add some more text to our component here so hello world uh, this is the swiftful thinking bootcamp i am really enjoying this course and learning a lot all right so you can see here that by default the text is center aligned so this last line here is in the center but we could use this multi-line text alignment to align it to the left side here so we can call it dot leading and now it aligns nicely and we can also do dot trailing if you need to i never really use this but it's super easy and super useful modifier let's put this back as leading and next we're going to use a new modifier so i'm going to actually add this one before the multi-line text alignment now in swift ui we haven't really discussed this yet but the order that you add these modifiers in does matter and we need to use this next modifier before we call multi-line text alignment so i'm going to press enter and create a line before this and let's add a modifier dot baseline offset and this you'll see is just basically the line spacing between each of these. So in like Microsoft Word, if you did line spacing of 2.0, well, that looks a lot like a baseline offset of 10. We can change this around, we can do 50, and now they're really well spaced out. And we can also make it negative 50 if we want it kind of inverse so that the spacing is above each line instead of below. I don't use this too often in code, but I wanted to show you guys that it's there and it's possible. Let's comment it out, and we can also add a modifier called dot kerning. Now this is the spacing between each letter. So right now at 1.0, it's adding about one pixel space between each of these letters. If I change this to 10, you'll see that the words really start spacing out. Again, this is not used very often, but you can make some really cool fonts and texts just like this. Let's comment that out. And one more font modifier you're definitely waiting for me to add is the dot foreground color. And this is just the font color. So we can do dot blue, dot red. And it changes the font, which is awesome. Now, real briefly, before we finish up, I want to talk a little bit about the frame of the text. We have not set a frame here. And this text is just resizing how it needs to resize to fit all the text within the box. But this box right here, this blue outline, we can actually set a specific size for if we want. So for example, I can call dot frame. And I'm going to do a video on frames later. Uh, but let's just say, for example, we use this width, height, and alignment. And maybe we needed our text to be like only a half of the screen. Well, we can change the width to, let's do 200, the height to 100, and we'll keep the alignment as center. Now you can see our box is smaller here and our text is getting cut off. Now there's going to be times in your app where you need the text to be within a certain area. And one of the really cool modifiers we can add on text is the minimum scale factor. So I can call dot minimum scale factor. And this is basically a percent of the font size. So if we did 0.1, we're allowing our font to scale down to about 10% of the actual font size so that it can try to fit within this box. You can see that our font automatically adjusted and resized to fit within this box, which is really awesome. 
Now the most common question I see is how do we align the text to the leading edge uh, if we don't have multiple lines? So right now it's multiple lines and it's aligning nicely to the leading edge of the text. But if we only had uh, one line here of code, hello world, you can see that it's still aligning to the, to the center because there's not multiple lines to align against and it's not going to the edges of our frame. And what we can do in this scenario is just change the alignment on the frame to leading. So we can do dot leading and now our text is pushed all the way to the left side. Lastly, before we wrap up, I just want to point out that the text accepts a string and in Swift, if you want to add actual text to your app that is not part of the code, you basically just put it within two quotes. So we have the quote, opening quote, the closing quote, and we have hello world. And we can call modifiers on it directly like dot lowercase, which will keep make all the text lowercase regardless of how you typed it in here. Could also do uppercase. And of course we can do capitalize. Capitalize is really useful. It capitalizes every word, which is what we already have here. Uh, but it's really useful if you need like cities and states and names, you can use capitalized. So that's it for this video. This was a pretty easy, straightforward one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I will see you guys in the next video.